This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, tech girl, Miriam Joar. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Joar, and today is Wednesday, December 6th, 2017. I think it's the 6th. Uh, my guests are pretty awesome. We have Ilian Fiole of Uber Gizmo and Don McGuire of Qualcomm. In case you guys are wondering, we're actually in Hawaii today. This is kind of exciting. It's very exciting. And this is the Snapdragon uh, Summit. It is Qualcomm's tech conference, I guess. And uh, the Snapdragon 845 was just announced. So that's kind of one of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, what were your initial impressions about you know, the announcements? There's that, and there's obviously Windows 10 on Snapdragon. Yeah, that's the, the biggest news, I think. Actually, devices. Yeah. So what's your, what's your take on those two things, quickly, Eliane? All right, so uh, I was very excited about seeing, like, uh, basically laptop running on a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip uh-huh. because it means, like, uh, just like your smartphone, uh, the... Now your laptop will be able to be always on. Uh, you don't have to uh, wait, even if it's like, you know, seconds uh, to actually to for your computer to boot up. It means also much more battery life. I think one of the devices was like uh, a week of it when you actually use it like really uh, a few hours a day. Um, and um, and also the, yeah, the power e- efficiency is really really cool for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited, Don, because it's finally real. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, mm-hmm. Computex. I saw the demo and I was like, this is awesome. This is the future. If you're using Windows and you're like me, uh, you know, t- on a plane all the time, you want ultra light, ultra thin, long battery life mm-hmm. connectivity. Right. I think this is, you guys nailed that, that use case, right? Nobody yeah, has absolutely. done that yet. Right. So to me, seeing real devices was like, okay, this is real. This is a thing. Um, those of you listening obviously don't know this, but there are two devices that were announced. Yeah. Uh, an Asus device called the Nova Go, mm-hmm. which is a slightly clunky laptop, but the price point is really good at $599. Um, and it's aluminum, but it's, uh, you know, 14 millimeters, 1.2 kilos. So we're not talking ultra light, ultra thin, yeah. but the, the HP device, the HP however, really yeah. Cool. What was like it called? The 6.9 millimeters. NVX2. NVX2, yeah. yeah. This is actually, the design is awesome. Yeah, I think it was, I thought it was uh, pretty, pretty slick. Uh, I'm not a big fan of detachable. So this, just so you know, this HP looks a lot like the Surface, um, the original Surface in the sense that it has like a, a little keyboard um, case stock thing. Mm. So you can't really use it on your lap that well, but that's why, I mean, I'm waiting for, honestly, what I'm waiting for is like a uh, MacBook like that, what we're using to record right now, or a 12 inch MacBook or like a Zen book, like super thin, super light. The first one of those I see, I think will be the Halo device. Yeah. You know, I can understand, I mean, it's early dawn, right? right? So CS is right around the corner. I'm sure we'll see more at CS. Yes. You might, you guys mentioned Lenovo on mm-hmm. stage, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so I think what's got me excited is to see when that Halo product comes out, because I honestly think that, you know, people that are just like me, road warriors, once they can see the potential of always connected, huge battery life and still do all the Windows 10 things they do, mm. they're gonna gravitate towards these. And if you make them super thin and super light, right. then, you know, regardless of the price in, in essence, you know, sure. I mean, I think pricing is gonna be needing to be competitive. We're gonna need mm. some like $300 devices mm-hmm. maybe at some point, once the Snapdragon chip can come down in price a little. Yeah. Yeah. But I think ultimately, that's what I wanna see is like yeah. something Halo. Yeah, and I think you'll you'll see that. I mean, this first round of devices um, are are devices that the OEMs felt like they could get to market quickly uh, with. And so, although I think the HP design is very cool, oh, it's very nice. Um, I, I've not used a detachable either before, um, but it is a very cool device. And um, the ASUS, albeit it's a little thicker, it is a full convertible, right? So you can flip it over. Flip yeah, it that around. is true. It does have a touch screen and everything. Yeah, it has a touch yeah. screen. It's full convertible. Um, so that's that's nice, especially for the price. And I think as we roll through CES and then we roll into what we call wave two, right, of these devices, not only will the, these three introduce more devices, but a whole new set of OEMs coming on board with, with, uh, with Windows Down Snapdragon. I think you're going to see some pretty killer designs um, as they become more familiar with the platform and they, they can really leverage the fact that it's 50% smaller, uh, the board is, which gives them a lot of room to create and be creative with regards to their form factors. 
um, as well as obviously put larger batteries inside, yeah. which helps the battery life story. So um, I think you know, it's an evolution, but I think you're going to see some pretty uh, groundbreaking designs coming through uh, 2018 that we've never seen before. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think that's what I think that's what's going to define the category. And I, I don't I know you're not really a marketing company, but I think if we can start seeing some sort of joint, you know, like Ultrabook was a great marketing term mm -hmm. from Intel mm -hmm. back in the day. And in, in, in fact, if you think about it, they weren't the first. I mean, my, that MacBook Air redefined that. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you guys can come up with uh, collectively as a bunch of, of uh, you know, companies, some sort of branding term, I think it's going to really help. Yeah. Like, you know, like a, na a single word or something. Right. Uh, like you have Snapdragon, it's a great brand, right? I, I think that's what I want to see because I think that's, I mean, when I talk to all the other journalists, it's been a you know a day or so since he, uh, we've seen these devices for the first time. So we've talked last night and everybody kind of agrees. We want to see a Halo device and we want to see a sort of brand around that device. So right. people know they're getting the, the Snapdragon one, right? right. Not in, and maybe, maybe that's all it is. Maybe all you need to do is make sure, you know, like, there's a little Snapdragon logo or something somewhere. <laughs> which which we very well could be. Um, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think we've gotten to the stage where we've defined the category, the category being always connected pieces, right? Yeah. Um, so now as, the, as we start defining it more from a spec perspective, et cetera, et cetera, going forward, I think, yes, I mean, I... The Ultrabook thing was interesting, right? Um, at when, when Intel came in, they, they delivered a reference platform, right? Called it the Ultrabook, and then they, they let the OEMs sort of take it and kind of create their versions of the Ultrabook um, and deliver that. But but to your point, I kind of joked that the Ultrabook was the MacBook Air. <laughs> and it was. Because <laughs> um, that's really was the first totally. Ultrabook. It um, totally uh, was. And so, um, so it, yeah, it, it kind of it helps kind of differentiate and, and, and tell you what you're buying or kind of give you a but I, I think it also pushed the OEMs to, 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 to go all in one dire that direction. Yeah, to and innovate. actually to innovate. And I think Asus uh, was really the first to make an ultra yeah. book that was compelling. And I have to give them with, kudos with for Zen being line. again, even though it's not the sexiest device, being the first to push a uh, Snapdragon mm -hmm. uh, based Windows 10 machine that is at a very competitive price wise. Yeah. Ilian, if you had to make your ideal Snapdragon Windows 10 machine, now that we can make them, but actually, what would you I, want? I use the, uh, I, I use the, yeah, the, the, the detachable. detachable. I have, I had a Surface 3 Pro, Pro, Pro yeah. but I broke it. Oh. And so I want the HP. <laughs> so you want the, just HP, but, I mean, but if you could create your own, what would it like? Like you looked at, to me, I look at the HP and I'm like, great, I could live with that. It's a detachable, it's not my ideal. I would like it to be thinner. Like I think honestly, if they can reach um, nine inch or 10 inch oh, iPad yeah. I Pro mean, I mean, size and thinness and everything, because yeah. that's still a little bigger than an iPad Pro, at least the smaller iPad Pros, yeah. then you can really nail Apple. Like you say, look, we made something that's the same size that runs yeah. the same time, has LT like you, but it's a full-blown Windows 10 machine. Nobody's done that yet. Yeah, right? you need more. Uh, we know that productivity is related to uh, the surface of your of your screens. You know, for I, sure. Like, yeah. I work on a 30 inch. Yeah, I know. I've so, seen your office. Yeah, it's and pretty then great. 90 inch. <laughs> so yeah. when I, I, think, I, yeah, I think 12 <laughs> inch is going to be the lowest we can go. Yeah. From a, Productivity, yeah. use, you know, consumer. Yeah, but if you put thin bezel, like this is a twelve yeah, inch, right? Yeah, but put a thin bezel. The thing I love about the HP is that when you're carrying it around, it feels like you're carrying like a paper notebook. Yeah, it's really like thin. You're going to take yeah. notes on yeah, in a meeting, I love uh, which is great, right? So I do love that. About and it. both devices came with pens. Yes, which I think is another thing to you know keep in mind that. Um, you know, the Surface obviously brought the pen back to the forefront. Uh, Microsoft did a very good job. But I think every device now that has a Windows 10 interface with uh, touch has automatically got a pen option. Yeah. And I'm glad to see that. I think this yeah, is great. I love it. And when I go back to, when I use uh, other people's computers and I always touch it, <laughs> and then when it's not touch, I'm really, I'm Do you take ready. notes with, by hand, Ilian? Uh, no, I, I take notes with, uh, with your, on, on my you phone. You type faster. Yeah, yeah with, me too. Um, audio, audio, audio recording. I've been actually, I just got the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Yeah. A few weeks, about a month and a half ago. It's and nice, I've, huh? been, I've been using the uh, stylus to do, to do things. And yeah, and I've actually more and more, I'm finding like little um, use cases for the stylus that I'm like, wow, it's great that I have this because I could do this. Mm. Right? Like the other day I was, trim, tree trimmers were at my house and my wife didn't like the, 
they had trimmed one of our trees and that she didn't like the shape and she wanted them to take more off of it. So I snapped a picture of it, took my stylus out and drew a line around where they should, you know, kind of target. And then I clipped it and sent it to her and she gave, she showed it to the tree trimmer guy and said, this is what we want. You know, you got to take more off of it. So I'm like, Hey, what a great use case, right? So um, I'm getting used to stylus on, on a smaller screen. So I'm looking forward to using it on, from, from an ink perspective, right? With a Windows 10 device. Yeah, yeah. Because I do, I find myself touching Mac screens. Oh, me too, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And going, oh God, I can't yeah, yeah. Oh, I, do that. Right? I want that so bad. And you know, it's funny you bring up the Note because uh, back in the day of the Note 5, and as you know, we skipped a generation with 6 didn't exist. Right. Two years ago, I was signing the paperwork for my house around this time of year. And... Um, uh, some of the stuff they were sending me were PDFs that were not optimized for mobile. Okay. And I was like, it was a very busy on the road month for me. And I was doing everything remote. And the note is what saved me because I could, and you know, you can use your pen, yeah. but if it's not optimized like for big fat fingers, right. uh, the note let me actually use totally off the shelf PDFs, right? Sign them and send them back right from my phone on a street corner. That was amazing. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm 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 getting I'm I'm getting excited about having a pen functionality on my PC. Mm. I know it exists today on Surface and stuff like that, but on these devices, it's gonna I think it's gonna be great. And I think the prepackaging with the pen, yeah, um, I think is also enhances the value of. And I think I'm really looking forward to seeing all the new form factors we're gonna see. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, there's a lot of well-established form factors. Detachable is one of them. The the two-in-one or yoga style that goes mm -hmm. all the way around, like the Asus, right? Uh, the what else? There is the uh, there is a bunch of other two-in-ones too. Right. I'm trying to think. I mean, there's different hinge designs, but right. basically, right. those are the two main ones, right? Yeah. But I think we could see something completely radically different yeah. too. Like, you know, uh, and and you, because the the your motherboard can be yeah right. but the motherboard can be it's basically the size of a credit card oh, yeah. right it's really so small. we're at the point where you could stick it you could have a dual just like a folding screen if samsung can make a screen that's flexible which are rumored to be doing this year for a potential yeah, like have, we have seen flexible screen for the past 20 years no no but <laughs> but, but but there's some strong only, rumors yeah, that, that they're going to you know, remember like there was that curved screen craze two or three years ago. Yeah. And from that came the plastic OLED screens we use today that we see with the rounded edges, like the, the Note 8 and the mm -hmm. Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. But true. that, you know, the, the roundness gimmick is gone, but now it's well established that right. you can make a screen reliably like that. Yeah. So I think that they're going to try to set the precedent maybe with a device this year that folds where the part that's folding is actually mm. display and it's reliable. And I think, you know, ultimately you can test this stuff in the lab forever, right? right. You know this. Yeah. And eventually you need to put it out there to figure out what, if it, if it flies or not, like it, will it be reliable enough? Maybe people will hate it. Yeah. You know, one of the phones It's that psychological because even if I know it's tested, reliable, like the f in my, the fact that I know the screen is, is like, Holding like that, I'm like, okay, I'm like, make, may, maybe hurting the device or something. Uh, I want to uh, segue really quickly on. That's because, only psychological. Because okay. this is on topic. Yeah. Okay. I have a phone that I just received this week, just before going to Hawaii, from ZT called the Axon M, right. which is a dual display phone. Okay. Um, and you can, you know, it doesn't bend in the middle of the display, yeah. but you can like put it together and get a larger surface. You can do tent mode where it's a mirror of each that's side. Yeah, that's great. I, I haven't played with it much, but it's been reviewed Me a little either. bit and I'm excited to try it out. I know it's going to be probably not so well implemented because it's the first time. Well, technically the second because Kyocera did the Echo a few right. years ago, right. but they really didn't do a very good job. I'm hoping I, ZT can do a better job. Uh, have you seen that phone again? No. No, I'll show it to you after. It's kind of the, interesting. All the other ones, but not so, this one. So, what about 845? So, 845. So, so by the way, I have seen Asus's second design. Oh, okay. Don't tell. Based anything. on 845. You're going to be in trouble. This is um, recorded. I know. <laughs> I would, no, I'm just going to say it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So, like I said, I have a large amount of confidence that these form factors, these devices are going to just keep getting better and better. So Sweet. Uh, but yeah, let's switch to 845. But, as a segue, are we... Do you... Like, uh, uh, Xiaomi said an 845 phone is coming. That's yes. a no-brainer. Like, there's going to be a lots of 845 phones. Yes. But what I want to know is, I, how much can you tell us about whether we're going to see an 845 Windows 10 device yeah. in I'm the curious. next, like, in the next very soon, Q1 or something? Because that, that would really mean a yeah. lot to me. Sure. Um, so, uh, and, in fact, you know, this is the, actually, this is a great topic. 
and, and I was on Paul Thorat's um, podcast earlier today, and this question came up of, so you announced first set of devices for Windows 10 on Snapdragon based on 835, but then the next day you're announcing 845, your next generation platform. <laughs> what gives? Yes. And it's a great question. Um, but one of the things that people don't understand, or not everybody understands, is the PC innovation cycle is slow. Uh, the silicon innovation cycle on PCs is slow, much slower than the mobile innovation cycle. We are introducing a new platform, a new premium tier platform every year. We're introducing iterative platforms every six months. So the innovation cycle on mobile is really fast. All the OEMs that make smartphones get that, right? They're ready to go with their next generation devices. Samsung, right? Everyone, they have their big events, their big unpack events. Boom, boom, boom. They want to go and they want to innovate and they want to introduce new, new devices based on new silicon platforms. PC has been historically tied to when is Intel going to get their collective shit together and be able to you know, <laughs> announce and launch Cannon Lake or announce and launch Isaac and there's delays. So it's much slower. So we've got this transition period where we, we are, we, we're coming from the mobile innovation cycle space, right? Microsoft and the OEMs, the PC OEMs specifically are coming from the PC innovation cycle, which is slower. So we've got, we've got to somehow Bridge that, that gap. Bridge that yeah, gap. Yeah. So the bridge is we had to go with 835 to get devices out the door in this time frame. Yeah. Because 845 wouldn't have siest in time. Um, and, you know, uh, OEMs had to get familiar, especially HP, with the platform, putting it into these devices. Asus obviously launches smartphones based on Snapdragon, so they're familiar with the platform. Um, but the ramp time had to happen. And then, and then we had to get to market in a time frame that was reasonable. So, so we're in this gap period, this transitional gap period. But what we want to do through, in, through wave two and even into wave three is we want to realign all those cycles. Windows 10 re releases, OEM ability to come to market, and our platform launches so that they line up to be at the same cadence as we are lined up today with our OEM partners like Samsung, like others, when they're, when they're launching their devices. Because you're right, Miriam, OEMs want us, especially the mobile first OEMs, when we, when we launch our next generation platform, they want to launch smartphones and PCs at the same, same time. time. Yeah. Wow. And, and so we have to get there. But we're not there right now, obviously. But I think you'll see that come closer together this next year, right? Um, I think you'll see a short period of time between 835 and 845 devices, probably not spring, because it will line up to retail cycles yeah. in the PC yeah, industry. Yeah. So probably it'll probably be more mid to the mid -year, second yeah. half of the year. Um, but... Then you'll see a full convergence by the time we are in Hawaii or someplace else <laughs> next year, uh, yeah. next year <laughs> and we're announcing our next generation platform. And I think you'll see signals that these types of form factors will come to market at similar times. That's awesome. Whether it's phone or PC. I'm you just know. wondering if now it means like the Android tablet is dead. Because if you have this uh, mobile platform, you can have the Windows in a very thin form factor, where where does it go with the Android tablet? Well, you know, I am just I was I mean, kind of like look. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't think when I don't think Android tablets were ever a thing. You know, they never hit the mark. I think yeah. Apple was able to make a, an intermediate device yeah. that's almost a laptop and almost almost a phone, but really has its own little universe. And they were able to develop that. And kudos to them. But I, personally, it's not my thing. I don't use tablets. No, I don't but I think that Android tablets never really hit the mark. None of them were really yeah. good enough. They do the job for some people. I think that in very specific silo use cases like uh, Fire, you know, Amazon, then it's so cheap that it doesn't matter and you can kind of get away with anything and it's all about con content consumption like and it works. I don't, I don't like but I think that. for me... Um, you know, I think what I'm excited about, and we've seen this again and again, we saw it with the Galaxy Note 8 with the, and this Galaxy S8 with the deck stock. Yeah. We've seen oh. it with uh, oh. Huawei and the Mate 10, which plugs directly into a, uh, a television and gives you a, a trackpad on the screen so you can actually use a desktop time experience. And I want to see an Android phone, like some sort of big flagship device that I just dock or plug in and it switches to Windows 10. And that is going to be the holy grail. Imagine the same storage for both OS, compute uh, performance, equal any laptop. Yeah. And, 
you know, it's a phone from one moment, it's a laptop another moment if you dock it or even have a shell that you just slide it in and it becomes like a super lightweight laptop. I mean, you know, if you can integrate the telephony so that your phone doesn't suddenly, you know, not work, you yeah. know, that that's yeah. the holy grail, I think, yeah. for us. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, the tablet space is, it was a kind of a little bit of a novelty, I think, in some ways. It's it's primarily consumption. Yeah. It's content yeah. consumption, yeah. right? It's, it's We call it the babysitter. You throw it in front of the kids and they watch a movie, they watch a show, yeah. they watch everything. And you see, you see it on airplanes, you see it everywhere. It's like, it's the consumption device. It's, it never has been tried to be more of a productivity device. It failed, right? I mean, even iPad Pro, over 50% of people don't even buy the keyboard in the, in the pen. For sure. It's just a bigger I, I do think that, iPad to watch. I do think there are Netflix some, on. there are a couple of yeah. use cases I'm finding myself using a touch screen um, for interacting with like heavy duty computing needs mm -hmm. and that's image editing. Mm -hmm. I find it's Creation. much more intuitive to use my fingers to rotate and scale and sliders on the yeah, screen than true. using the keyboard and hotkeys like yeah. Photoshop traditionally lets you yeah. do. And I find that the other use case is, is very, very silo is music. music. The music composition and creation is incredible tools on the iPad yeah. compared to even what we have on Macs and PCs. It's very tactile, right? Like yeah. you, you can reconfigure that screen to be any surface to do anything. And with haptic feedback, it can give you some good feedback. I think there's a lot of, I don't say tablets are not useful and are dead. I'm just right. saying that I, I see the tablet as an extension of the laptop and the PC. Yeah. To me, it's like, make it a detachable if you really want a tablet, make yeah. it a, a, you know, a, a surface book or something right. that can turn into a laptop at a moment's notice and you're yeah. good to go. Yeah. Um, but hey, that's just me and maybe I'm wrong because apparently yeah, millions example, of yeah, people are buying iPads, huh? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, for me, I, I'm, usually I carry two, uh, a laptop, a clamshell, you know, you can work on your lap. And for the plane, I use always my Surface because it's, it really fits. Because I work on planes. Like, yeah, I, I so do I. I do my videos and I write my article where mm -hmm. I have, don't have emails. So I can really... Like five, six, seven hours straight, no distraction, and I can really, right. yeah. But on, on plane, it's where I really love the detachable, you know, tablet yeah. form factor. So it gives, with, you, it gives with, you options, right? Yeah, with, it's confined because space you know, or, you are like yeah. here. So the, the the larger laptop, it's not for you. Really That's why I picked a twelve inch you know? MacBook because I know it fits yeah. on almost all the trays, and I can still work even on the most clamped you know, crammed, whatever, cramped economy uh, seat, except when people recline and it gets a little hairy. But the viewing angles are good enough that I can have the display at yeah. a weird angle and it's still okay. So I've seen people using like tablets like, like that. For with sure. Like uh, detachable uh, keyboards and like uh, whether yeah. it's an iPad dock, or Android. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's why, you know, I thought like some people for some very specific use case, they like the, ta the tablet. And for me, I prefer to read books. Even if I can at night read books on my smartphone, I prefer a, a slightly larger screen like a tablet to, to read all my Kindle books. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't buy any more books, read books anymore. Screen real estate is wonderful. I mean, there's no yeah. doubt about it, you know. But I think that when you look at the pain of switching between, you know, one device and another, yeah. to me, switching between my phone and my laptop I know that on my laptop, I, I can be much more productive. So instantly there is friction in switching, mm -hmm. but if I overcome that friction, I know that I'm going to get much more productive. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas with the tablet, there's the same friction as my phone. I don't get much more productive. It's a little easier because I get more screen real estate. So I feel like, you know, and again, everybody's got a different use case. Harry McCracken, very well-known journalist. We all love him. Mm -hmm. Uses an iPad as a primary writing tool with a keyboard yeah, seen, everywhere seen, he goes. I've seen lots and of people. I've asked him, I'm like, you know, how do you do it? And he's like, yeah. I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To each their own. <laughs> so 845, I mean... You know, it seems to me like every year we get another Snapdragon 800 series flagship, you know, um, chipset right. and it, it kicks ass. And and I'm kind of feel that like very jaded because I'm like, yeah, it's going to be great. Of course, it's going to be great. But I mean, I think for you guys, I think it must be really challenging to live up to that, right? Mm -hmm. sure. In a way. I mean, you told us today that you you start about a year and a half prior and you identify key pillars yep. and then you go on those pillars and you deliver, right? right? But to me, it's like, that's that's almost like crystal ball gazing, right? Like, I mean, a year and a half is a little bit long to really predict where things are going. Yeah, it is a little bit. I mean, we do rely a lot on the ecosystem, uh, on our partners, on OEMs, 
to kind of guide for guidance where they think things are headed. And then what, where's the, what's the mark, what's going on in the market? And it's not just the smartphone market, but what's going on with technology in general. And, you know, the re- there's a purpose why AI and immersion are the two key. I mean, we have lots of pillars for 845, we have the security pillar, the connectivity pillar, right? But those are sort of table stakes, especially for us, right? right? But the AI and immersion pillars coming to the top this time, this year, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason market trends, technology trends, timing, and the, what the use cases that we've heard from the ecosystem that they want to deliver, right, yeah. to users. Um, whether they, there needs to be strong AI to do that at the, at, at the, at the, on the device side. There needs to be more immersion. There needs to be a better camera. I mean, this most interesting thing is the camera, right? The camera is becoming not just a camera. The camera is becoming interactive it's becoming something that you not just take pictures with or video with but you like like he said you you actually use as a tool to express your personality and who you are right and to communicate with people yeah through the camera right which who the thought right and so it's interesting how these things are evolving and so we had to we felt because of those trends and what's happening especially in china and in other places we have that's where we had to lean in yeah right and that's why you see because if you look back at 835, right, and what we sort of really leaned in on versus 845, you'll see that, you know, the neural processing engine was there, things were there, but but there was a different balance, I guess yeah. I would say, of things. And so um, and so that's how we sort of, to your point, we we task ourselves to deliver, you know, that next generation in a compelling way is we have to nail those pillars. Yeah. I'm actually very excited that you guys – are leveraging your DSP and other cores to, you know, pick the as best a solution. DSP. Yes, as a former DSP person. I mean, I feel that it's really smart that you're, you know, not jumping in the bandwagon of custom hardware for, for, net, for neural networks and AI simply because I don't see that being a, a solution. As an engineer, I'm like, you're limiting yourself. You have CPU, you might need the GPU, you might need the CPU, and definitely you'll need the DSP. And the DSP is always kicked ass on, on the Snapdragon platform, right? So to me, that's smart. My only concern as I've been putting my journalist cap back on instead of my you know uh, engineer cap on, is like, how do you market that as a unified thing, like the Snapdragon brand is unified, because obviously, you know, you guys are going to rely on your uh, partners, the manufacturers right. of these devices to really go out there and say, look, we're using this awesome Qualcomm technology for AI, um, but there's no name for it. Like there's no, you know what I'm saying? There's no like, we create, like Huawei went nuts on the Mate 10, yeah. the, right. the Kirin 970 about the NPU. Right. And I think it's great for them marketing wise. I'm not sure it's the right engineering solution. Right. It probably has a very narrow band of purposes, right? And, and short shelf life. But in the meantime, how do you market that? How do you get, you know, I think not just for you, not just for the manufacturers, but for yourselves. Because again, it's the same thing as how do you, how do you brand that, this is Windows 10 running on a Snapdragon versus an Intel chip, you know? Yeah. So that's what, I think that's your next, next nut to crack on a non-technical side. And it's a challenge because we have to balance trying to be as broad as possible for the ecosystem. Because to your point, on, on especially on AI, algorithms are changing. They're continuing to change. So to, 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 to lock ourselves on, in on an NPU type of solution when we have to enable an ecosystem makes no sense. Right. For Huawei, who's just making chips for their own devices, yeah. if they want to lock themselves in, they lock themselves in. Whether it was the right decision or wrong decision, the only people that they're impacting is themselves. Yeah. We are impacting an ecosystem. right? So we have to balance that with creating that thing, creating that marketable thing, Miriam, to your point, which is could take the form of an MPU or something, right? Yeah. And, and getting that messaging through all the way through as the OEMs start to deploy devices based on our platform that they are utilizing the Qualcomm AI thing and they're using the image processing thing. I mean, we've named, we have our Spectra ISP, but rarely does that stuff come through to the top of the marketing funnel. It's, and in fact, a lot of times OEMs will rename it yeah, you know, I, and, I think, and, and you take know, credit for it, right? Which is again historically we've been okay with that. You you see us starting to turn a little bit towards taking more credit, yeah, um, for our inventions and our innovations. So that will continue, but we've got to strike that right balance. Do, do you have an idea? Do you have a suggestion how they should market this at the end? Or well, yeah, DSC is not very sexy. No, I know. know. <laughs> but my my take is this. Here's what I, I would know. do. Here's what I would do. I, know, I would I honestly know. focus on. Sp- 
like once a device is out, specific use cases that are really kick ass, mm -hmm. that really demonstrate what Qualcomm has brought to the table in terms of AI, yeah. that's being leveraged in that chipset by that manufacturer, right. and, and then uni just... unify that message across all the devices that are coming out throughout the year. Okay. And then you, you're gonna just like educate people at that point, and I think the message is gonna come through. Yeah. Yeah, Consistency is what this Because something? proof is in the pudding, right? Yeah. You, you can't- Year old dragon, or? <laughs> <laughs> the smart dragon. The smart dragon. <laughs> the smart dragon. Listen, I know you got to run, Don. Great. Well, nice to see you again. All right. Thanks. <laughs> all right, Don. Don. All right. So, what do you think of all this in the end? Now that Don has <laughs> left us, we can be. No, I'm sure you were candid earlier. No, but I mean, it's exciting, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. I'm. I'm most excited by the the new devices with the new. Uh, yeah. Like I mean, that was that was platform. real, right? Like yeah. seeing something we got hands on. And, for, and when it comes to artificial intelligence, what the what the processor is capable of doing, uh, I want to see more use cases uh, yeah. by OEM. So I was wondering because they talk about the computer vision. You know, I'm I'm most interested in these type of things, like where you know the. The camera on the Huawei devices with the 970, they can they recognize, you know, uh, objects. And uh, according to that, your camera sets itself by, its, uh, you know, automatically. Yeah. So it's easier for people to now uh, leverage that, you know, that type of computer vision for cameras. I'm more interested in what the, you can do uh, in drones, for example, because I know that the, right. the future of drones, they will be fully autonomous. Yeah. So you need the uh, powerful computer vision for drones, but I'm not sure at what point the just a uh, uh, general uh, chip like the Snapdragon can go, because usually for comp really uh, high level computer vision, you need dedicated chip. Yeah. So. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they can pull off. I think for me, what's exciting is that you know, Google's done the AI. Th showing what can mm -hmm. be done with AI with mm -hmm. the Pixel 2, mm -hmm. right? And I think they're the best implementation so far. Yeah. So if, uh, you know, other manufacturers use Qualcomm's expertise to do this, to at least match or come close to the Pixel yeah. 2 next year, then, you know, we're, we're progressing, right? I think to me, the, that, the Pixel 2 this year was the, one of the biggest steps forward in mobile photography in the last five years. Because it's the hardware is commodity now, right? Yeah. Good at getting a good sensor with a good lens, fast f over one point eight or less, right? Well, yeah. OIS, Depends. all of that. It's yeah. expensive, but it exists. Yeah. Yeah, it's exists. It's commodity. Yeah. So, so now, how do you make it better after that? Well, it's all software computing. Yeah. Like it's all computational. Yeah. What I said, like yeah, right? yeah. So or like having people like uh, to just set up the camera the way it should be according to what the yeah. camera is, is viewing. And I honestly think like you know the Mate Ten. Uh, let's talk about the Mate 10 Pro yeah. because I just got mine. Yeah. It's right here on the table. I'm recording a backup audio on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very impressed with the camera, but I still think the Pixel 2 is better. And I think right. that the reason for that is simply because their AI is more sophisticated and advanced mm -hmm. than Huawei's. Yeah. Um, because they've been doing it longer. In, in the original yeah. Pixel already Google had AI. Google has much more experience. And they have bigger data set yes, too. Yes. Huawei does yes. not have access to the yeah. billions of images yes. That like Google does. So yeah. I think that's kind of what's got me excited. You know, it's, it's, I want to see now that they've got this built into the 845, hopefully, you know, companies like OnePlus who don't have that expertise and you can see that in the result of mm -hmm. their photos of yes. their devices yes. or Essential or Moto mm -hmm. with the Moto Z24. Mm -hmm. These are three phones that are great phones, mm -hmm. yes. but are a little under the, you know, under the weather for photography, yeah. right? They're not quite as good yeah. as the top flagships. Mm -hmm. And I think simply because they don't have uh, an ability to leverage this technology because they don't have it in house. So if Qualcomm can offer them that technology, hopefully they take it, right? And yeah. they don't ignore yeah. it yes. because that's what I'm worried about them ignoring it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think, uh, so the, have you played with the Mate, Mate 10 Pro? Do you have one? Uh, yeah, I have, I have one. I didn't really play too much with it. But, but what do you uh, think? We, we actually tested the, compared the, the, the cameras, the cam no, uh, um, photo quality. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I'm a bit biased because <laughs> I prefer the camera. I prefer is out on the side, the Galaxy phones. Okay. Like the, you know, the high Note. End, uh -huh. the, the Note. 
which is for me is the, the best one. Uh, we didn't play with the pixel yet. We don't. We didn't receive one. Oh, you need to. It is. Yeah, I know. It is I know. A whole so that's why I couldn't. Better. I couldn't comment on that. But that's yeah. the truth. We have have been asking for like a few weeks. So hopefully we will get get it soon. Uh, but yeah, I've seen like I've heard. I've read. You know, other people. I mean, it's in, it's incredible. Yeah. It is it. And it's just AI. It's uh, that's just a differentiator. There's no magic going on in terms of the hardware. The hardware is good camera hardware, you know, fast lens, good sensor, OIS, all the things you need, all the things that the Note 8 has, all the things that the Galaxy S8 mm -hmm. has, but the software just yeah. blows it out yeah. the park. And doing portrait mode using the dual pixels inside mm. the single sensor is insane. Oh, what cool. a great idea. Mm. And and that's that's Google. I, I'm really impressed. So the the Mate 10, yeah, it's it's um, has a you know a little bit of AI for for the cameras, for four, yeah. yeah. So the, which is which is good, but I mean, I, mean, I think it takes better photos than the P10 and the Mate 9 last year, mm -hmm. which were very good already. Mm -hmm. I think it's an improvement. You can see an improvement. Uh, f over 1.6 on both lenses yeah, this is, is a very, very, very impressive. Very, yeah, very bright. But I think it's more. It's better than the the latest. Uh, but I weekend. think they, they. I need to check this. So listeners, don't you know? Let's let's research this together. Maybe for the next podcast, you guys can tweet and tell me. I think they simplified the camera system because when I was getting briefed, they said. I said, "Does do both lenses have OIS?" And they said, "No." And I said, "What do you mean?" And they yeah. said, "Only the main lens is OIS." And I was like. Yeah. That's a change from last year. Last year, the P10 and the Mate 9 had OIS on both lenses. Yeah. And to me, that's a step backwards because, I, I, and I could be wrong, maybe, you know, because Huawei, they, they're not very clear about their technical stuff. So maybe last year, the P10 and the Mate 9 did not have OIS on both lenses and we never noticed and we never knew. And now this is continuing the trend of what they were doing. But they didn't remove it, it just was never there. But I was under the impression last year the Mate 9 and P10 had dual OIS, and this only has single OIS on the color lens. And I, and I can confirm it because when I took a monochrome picture today, and I, I wasn't very steady, it was blurry. But when I was steady, it was good. Whereas if I took a color photo and I was moving, it was steady, it was fine. So I think it's interesting, maybe, Maybe they did, never did have OIS on the second lens, and maybe they did and they removed it. So we have to figure that out. But that's my only... You can check. My maybe only drawback. Again the question. I'm going to pull out... My, yeah. I'm not, it's not with me, but I'm going to pull out my P10 at home, and I'm going to try the monochrome. If the monochrome is blurry, then I know so that it was wrong. The P10 was my favorite. It's a good phone. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, like, you know, I like this is... I mean, the problem with the P10 and, and you know... And to a lesser extent with the Mate 9. But the P10 really is, there's big bezels, top and bottom with the yeah, fingerprint reader. It's ugly. It's very yeah. iPhone-like. The P9. Yeah, it looks like an iPhone. The P9. I tell you, that was the, when, when I got it, it's like, everybody said, oh, it's a blue iPhone. Yeah. Like, okay. And the P9 the year before had small bezels. It looked really sexy. Yeah. And the Mate 9 has small bezels. And I'm like, why did they... Make it look like an iPhone. That was my only beef with it. This, of course, this is the Pro, so it has the uh, 18.9 well, display. I really love the, 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 you know, they introduced this new diamond-shaped texture. Oh, yes, great. The, yeah, and the, and yeah, the blue color was very unique. So, and so the, that <laughs> actually was the only thing that was different from the iPhone, and you could, you could tell yeah, it's not yeah. an iPhone. I like that on the P10. I've got it on my P10 Plus. It's gold. It's a gold pattern. But, oh, gold. but wow. this phone, the Mate 10 Pro, I really like it. The I really love the display. AMOLED 89, oh, beautiful. Yeah. But no headphone jack. Oh, they're annoying me with that. Why do they keep removing headphone jacks from phones? Um, so, I don't know. Maybe what do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I need the headphone jack. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. Pixel doesn't have a headphone jack now. Mate doesn't have a headphone jack. Well, the Mate 10 regular has a headphone jack, but it's not water resistant. The Mate 10 Pro is water resistant, has no headphone jack and no micro SD. Weird decisions. Anyway. So um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, how they, they make those decisions. You, you know, we were in this briefing for, yes. the, for the... Honor 7X. 7X. Yeah, Why? let's talk about that. 
<laughs> connector. Why they did this? They went micro USB <laughs> yeah. instead of USB C <laughs> on this cheap phone. And I was upset by that. And they didn't understand why. We had like a, a big conversation about the reason. And then they didn't want to tell us exactly why they. they because they're to. trying to save 20 cents and they want to be cheaper yeah. than Motorola. Yeah. Uh, that, right? that, that was my take on it. They yeah. wanted to do actually. Uh, and they don't have NFC again. No. How do you make a mid range phone without NFC in the US where every one of you, want, everybody wants to pay with Android Pay? At least. Maybe maybe we're the only ones who want to pay with Android Pay. Maybe the real people. The yeah, real that was also my guess. I'm, I'm, I don't. Pay? Know, do you know the data? I'm. I'm curious. So how many? What's the proportion of? I don't of, know. Uh, like. People? All I know is that for Thanksgiving holidays, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, 33% of retail sales were paid for the mobile device. All right. That's high. 33. But with. Android Pay or, well, Apple, I, or Apple, Apple, Apple Pay. Pay, right? So probably Not, mostly Apple right. Pay, right? Uh -huh. Because okay. I don't think, yeah. and it's very common on Android. Like it exists, but yeah. I don't think people use it on Android as much as Apple. I think yeah, a so lot that's of Apple a, that's, a, that's a good uh, data point because thirty percent is huge. It's big. So so yeah, that's so they should do the. So what do you think of the Honor Seven X? Um, we don't know the price yet. Oh, well, we now uh, we yeah, do. They, do they we know the price? They now. It's uh, 200, right? Uh, yeah, something like that. I mean, don't take our word for it. Go check. Yeah, go but check. I don't apparently, know. it's it's. I think it's gonna be around 200, which yeah. is insane for the phone. Like the I'm phone sure. is amazing for the money. Yeah. Um, yeah, the phone is is great. It's really money. good. It's all metal. Has a beautiful six inch IPS, yeah. 189 display, very mm -hmm. little bezel. It looks like basically it looks like a OnePlus 5T, half the, less than half the price. Yes. Right? So yeah, for the price, it's just great, great performance. What I like about it is the, the display, is. the design. Um, what I don't like is micro USB. <laughs> uh, I, don't I, like I don't like the camera sticking out. Oh, it sticks out a little bit, yeah, like because, an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. because uh, I think uh, they want for uh, they want for the price, they want to do a thin body. Yeah, but they they need the camera. The yeah. Of the camera. Yeah. So well, look at OnePlus. Even at a five hundred dollar price point, which is three hundred dollars more, they still have a bump for the camera. You know, Apple still has a bump for the camera at a thousand dollars. Yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. Oh, maybe um, we are we are uh, We're spoiled with we are galaxies. Spoiled. <laughs> yeah, the galaxies. Or are you know that. the the P10 and the Mate 10, the camera doesn't stick out. Yeah. Same with the, uh, same with the mate, yeah. Mm. I think it's interesting. I mean, for me, the lack of NFC is disappointing, the, the micro USB, uh, and then uh, also, and this is true on the mate. I just want to say the mate is a thousand dollar phone, well, 799 euros, mm -hmm. that's almost a thousand US dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and it has no auto HDR. Oh, so this is, me, oh, it's, it's, Annoying. How can you make a phone today that doesn't have auto HDR? Even at the low end, like that's no. insane. And even like when I wanted to picture with the the V10, uh, you have to go in the spec. In the, to, yeah, it's, it's yeah. like it's, it's not right there, you know. And so, just so you're wondering, if we're talking about the V10, we're not talking about the LG V10 from two oh, years sorry, ago. Yeah. We're the talking view, about the, the new the Honor, Honor View 10 or view Honor 10. V10 or whatever it's yeah. called that was announced at the same that's, time that's as the probably, Honor. I don't know what they have with HDR because you have actually to mode. You have to go yeah, to drill down the th specs. They need to, to change the, that yeah. because that's stupid today. And then so whether on Samsung it's right there, you yeah. can turn it it's off. Auto. Yeah. If you if you don't want to use it same or it's Apple, auto, uh, same with Pixel, and it's very same accessible. With LG. Yeah, it's very I don't accessible. Understand. So I don't understand why they don't make it uh. more accessible. So. But you know, look at the same time, you know, I'm sure they're going to fix that because I mean, on the Honor 7X at $200, I can live without it. Mm. But on the Mate 10 Pro and on the V the V10, mm. the V10, the V10 is going to be about $500, and it's essentially yes. the Mate 10 specs. In a much lower price point, yeah, right? Yeah, with, uh, with the less, Kirin 970. less stylish design, you know. I prefer the, the Mate yeah, 10 I, Pro. Yeah, of course. But I mean, uh, at $500, yeah, are you no. going to complain? Yeah, no, no. no I'm not. And you get a headphone jack. You get yeah. a headphone jack. <laughs> yeah. You get the Mate 10 camera, although I think it doesn't have OIS at all. No, and then, no, oh, no, there's no, there's no IS. No, we no. have giants coming from the ceiling. No, there's no IS. That's, no IS. No. They removed it. So, yeah. and so, so the, the, the performance in low light is... is is good, but it could be better. Yeah, yeah. So I, I tried that. 
Yeah, I think I think it's going to be interesting though. Uh, definitely going to be an interesting competitor to the five to the One Plus Five T at the same price point. Yeah. Um, so those are you know, those are the news in terms of new phones for me. The seven I have the seven X. I have the May Ten Pro. I don't have the V Ten or the View Ten yet. Very soon I will get it. And you just got a One Plus Five T. Have you had a chance to play with it? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Not yet. Have you taken it? Have you touched yeah. it? At least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what yeah, is your first impression yeah. after half an hour? <laughs> well, just just seeing it. Okay, yeah, it's uh, it it looks good, but I don't. Yeah, really have I, I actually think it. I like the, you know the full display, like eighteen yeah. nine, no finger. I, I like fingerprint reader in the back. You know, that's eighteen nine. It's so it looks to be the, the new thing. Eighteen nine is the, great. Yeah, but yeah. I feel if you look at close, you put it next to the five. It looks a little bit, the design is not quite as nice, like, because the camera sticks out mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. and they had to like kind of build an island around it. It's not as refined, I think. It's, some people argue with me about that. I think some people look at them and they prefer the 5T. I prefer the 5, the back of the 5, the front of the 5T. If they could marry the <laughs> two together, I would be happy. <laughs> But the five, look, the five T for the money is a phenomenal phone. Like, especially, and I've been saying this for a few podcasts now. My, the trick is this: any phone that runs Snapdragon eight twenty one and eight thirty five, mm -hmm. if the camera app that comes with the phone is not very good, like Essential yeah. five five T mm. uh, uh, Moto Z two fours, install the Pixel camera from last year's Pixel. You can download it on XDA forums and on APK mirror and you can install it and magically yeah the software is better exactly and then magically you get better pictures so that's great really because it saves your camera because if you are on a budget and you cannot afford to buy a Note 8 right but you can afford to buy but also it depends on the sensor if I you mean, can buy a, a, I mean, a next the sensor is, is one What's it's a, not only the they're pretty the, good the sensors like yeah. they're okay sensors right mm. I mean the pixel because I year, know for example uh, LG used to have a, they did an uh, awesome job on the software side with some sensor that were, we're not the, the exactly the high end sensor so that's what I'm saying is like the, you know the pixel one last year the sensor there hasn't had no OIS the sensor and the lens f over 2.0 the lens and sensor were average but the software was really good so now take that software and put it on a slightly better yeah, lens software on in camera the software makes a huge totally. difference so the 5t has mm. f over 1.7 or you know it's pretty fast yes yeah, so and the sensor is pretty good like so i think it, you know it for me it's been an improvement than using the oneplus camera so that's the trick. So I didn't try that. It's not a huge improvement, mm. but it's at least in low light, you can really see it because you know, all the HDR plus mm -hmm. auto mm. um, features, all that stuff is, is, is done really well. So you benefit from a lot of the AI, early AI features from Google, like a year ago AI features. So hopefully somebody does the same with a Pixel 2 camera to put it on. Any that would be great. Notification. They haven't done it yet. So I think it, it took a bit of hacking to get that to work. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, I guess. Um, what other phones have you played with recently that you liked? I mean, obviously you have a Galaxy Note 8. Well, you better took it, right? Yeah, I was supposed <laughs> to get it, but you took it first. <laughs> and and uh, so oh, you're, doing, you're using a S8 Plus, correct? S8 Plus, yeah, because uh, that's the phone factor I like the most. You know, that's over your five favorite inch. phone right now? Yeah, that's my favorite phone. It's it's a good phone. Yeah, it's I a like good mine. Yeah, I like the and I like the kind of the glass design. I'm pr I'm pretty clumsy, so I, I tend to break. I have a V30 is broken. Oh no, it's not me. Yeah, so it's a glass. Uh, I love the V30. Yeah, I the love the V30. Is I, a no, great the phone. The V30, I love it. Yeah, and what I love about the LG one is they use the dual camera for a yeah, wide the angle. wide angle. And this is when I travel. <laughs> I know. I don't really. You know the 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 sec the dual camera for bokeh effect for me, I don't really enjoy that because yeah no I don't it, care it, about portrait like, what, yeah what portrait mode I, I never so you want to know what's tragic no I did I brought a bunch of phones as you know yeah. mostly because they're new phones that I want to play with but I did not bring one of the LGs which means I don't have a wide angle camera for this trip. And I'm really feeling the pain yeah. because, you know, that's the, pain when the, you travel, when the you Mate 10 Pro has a zoom feature like the Note, and it does a very good job at zooming in. Uh, 
it does it electronically. It doesn't have a, an actual zoom lens, but mm-hmm. it has this really cool, like it does some software trickery to get a really good two times mm-hmm. zoom. Mm-hmm. If you more than two times, it, it looks bad. But if you do two times, it's good. And, and the OnePlus 5T has a two times zoom also in software that's actually pretty good because it uses both sensors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm okay for the zoom, but I didn't bring the V30 that I normally have with me or the G6. I so, have one if you want to. No, it's okay. I'm fine. I mean, I'm going to try to work around it somehow because that's my mistake. You know, I, yeah, it's yeah, funny. That's, uh, it's funny. I started to use that with the V20 and I couldn't, you know. The V20 was great. And actually, uh, it was stolen in New York when I was on the. It was know, stolen? Yeah, in a bar. Wow. Well, yeah. Those when New Yorkers. I was, yeah, when I was in New York. And so I really miss when I don't have the both like the wide angle and then, you know, s- switching from yeah, wide angle yeah. to regular angle when I travel, it's really... It's Do a, you know there's only one other phone yeah, in I know, the world, I the X4, yeah. the Moto X4? Yeah. That's it. That's it, yeah. I, I don't, don't understand why so the I don't, manufacturers don't, don't why, do it. Because I don't know why they now the dual camera is the trend and why they don't use it for that. Nobody does it dual, except dual LG lens, and that one Moto phone. Yeah. yeah, dual lens cameras, like... I don't know. I want to see more of it. And then uh, what else was I going to ask you? We talked about the X, the 7X, the V10, the Mate Pro, my new Axon, SAT Axon M, which is, I'll show you uh, after, the thing yeah. that unfolds is crazy. Yeah, so we don't and have then, this one. Sorry, uh, much, you should get it. It's, yeah, yeah. Ask, ask your AT&T people because it's an AT&T specific phone. Uh, you might be able to get it from at t faster than ZT. Now, ZT, I reviewed a very entry level phone. I don't remember, like the uh, Blade below V8. 200. Oh, like, that one, yeah, yeah. Uh, 160, uh, really, really, really cheap phone. Was it good? Uh, well, for the price, it was good. Okay. <laughs> but the camera, honestly, the camera, the low light performance was really, terrible. No, yeah. terrible. So, and the, and the design was like, you know, uh, Big body and then yeah, but what hundred you know one hundred sixty. Yeah, you know the like phone that, that the you know it's almost the end of fifty nine or it's, something like that. it's almost the end of the year, so I think it's safe to say that will not be another phone that competes with this phone. So I really but like the, the X four. The X four actually for the price, That's I really great. I really like the design. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful phone. It's like a, a cheaper mini version of the Galaxy S eight. Yeah. Without the widescreen. Yeah, and I really kind of like the fact that it's very unique, uh, you know, the camera. Industrial design, shape, yeah. That, that like little, with, little with little the, bars, big, the yeah. big rounded I shape, agree. which, make, you know, all the phones, they look kind of alike. You see, now it's like, it's like dual, you know, dual lenses on the back. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the, the Moto has really a unique uh, personality when it comes to its design. And, for the, and it looks high-end. Well, for like, uh, you know, very mid-range. Yeah, it's $400, right? Yeah, $400. Right? 400 so, yeah. You know, the one that I was going to talk about that I think is my winner of best phone for the least amount of money is also a Moto, and it's the E4. Oh, okay, $80 yeah. dollars on Verizon. Yeah. And E4, yeah. it is, okay, the camera in low light is not great, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. Like, it's yeah. not like unusable. Yeah. And it's fast enough. It's amazing, actually, how everything about it is okay. Not great, but okay. okay. And for eighty dollars, who cares? Yeah. It's amazing. I'm impressed. I mean, if it's as good as the mid-range motor was two years ago for four hundred dollars. Wow. Pretty much. Yeah. Because it's as good as the Moto G three, and that's two years ago. Because I think a Moto G five is what we have now, right? So yeah, impress. Really impressive. Um, other than that, what, what have you been using for a laptop? Oh, for a laptop. What's your latest laptop? You have a Lenovo. You have yeah, a really the old, old Lenovo. one. <laughs> yeah, you made fun of me because I like the color. <laughs> That's right. No, no, There's I nothing really, wrong I really that. need the new device. I so think what, the, are you, what are you going to do? Uh, what is this next one? I think I want the Yoga... 920, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this one is really the, the one with the fancy hinge? Yes, I like I like that hinge I like, design. I, like I think it's really design. good. Yeah, this is a, a that's a yoga a trademark. You know, yeah, I hinges. think that's very unique. It looks really good, I think. And it's, it's very thin and it's mm-hmm. very powerful. So that's uh that's, that's my what you next, want. I think that's my next device. You're not going to wait to find out. Or the HP. I was, <laughs> was going to say, you're not going to wait till CS to find out if they come out with a Lenovo 
uh, Snapdragon yeah. with the hinge. I'm waiting with that for hinge. it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want like, I honestly, want but yeah. honestly, I, w I would like the 845. You know, of course, but that's you. You heard Don. It's not going to happen mm -hmm. until next mid next year. Now, yeah, no. um, what other things have you tested? That you, have you played with the Pixel Book from uh, from Google? You know the the high end no, Chromebook. We didn't. Well, what happened is like we were invited to the event, but uh, I was in Japan for another event, so uh, we couldn't make, couldn't it, make it. it. And so I think that's why when you don't go there, yeah, you didn't get it's there. harder. Yeah, yeah. It's you harder. can ping them; they'll send them to you. Yeah. Um, but we already did. So it's been know. a good. It's been. A, I mean, I like Chromebooks, and it's a really nice Chromebook. It's the most. I think it's the most refined design for a laptop. I saw the first one. Was it was. Imagine it's half the thickness. Yeah. So and it's two in one. Yeah. So it goes like completely into a yeah. tablet. It's really impressive. I I brought it with me here. I'm not using it to record the podcast, but I brought it in my hotel room and I'm using it. The keyboard is the best keyboard I have ever used on any laptop. Oh, yeah, it is insane. Because usually Lenovo, they have a very very. Oh, Lenovo is very good. Very good keyboard. They are very uh, famous. Lenovo in general is very good. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah, I mean you know I don't know. Um, what are you looking forward to? In the next in the next year. So what I also played with is uh, talking about Lenovo. You, you've seen at uh, the Star Wars. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah, challenge, that thing, like uh, the VR stuff. It's augmented reality, yeah, right? You can see through, it, right? Yeah, yeah, see through augmented reality, and you actually basically you have also a lightsaber. A lightsaber. What is it called? Uh, Jedi Jedi Challenge. The Jedi Challenge the Jedi, from Jedi, Lenovo. Yeah, from Lenovo. So it's a partnership, Disney and Lenovo. This is great. And this is really what I like is that there's a very, uh, the learning curve is pretty uh, fast, you know? So, so, so they you, made it you, easy to play. Yeah, yeah, it's for, so anybody can play. Like, and then you have fun right away, you know? It is a dedicated device, right? Like, there's, you don't put your phone in it, it's, it's standalone, correct? Yeah. Yeah. You don't plug into a PC, you just turn it on and it works. Mm -mm. Wow, that's amazing. And does it only play that one game then? Or is it more coming? Well, I just tested it with th that game. I'm not... Right. See, I didn't open the box. But <laughs> I played with it at IFA. You played with it so, at IFA. So yeah, yeah, we played with... We, we saw it in the briefing and then we play, I, I tested it at IFA. So quickly, we got a couple of minutes to, before we need to finish. What do you want to tell people where they can find you on the internet? Like... Are you on Twitter? Are you on anywhere? No, I'm mostly more on Facebook than Twitter. Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. So And of course you write for Uber Gizmo, so you should tell yeah, people well, about where to go. Where do they go to read your blog and your stuff? Oh, so it's uh, ubergizmo.com. That's right. And uh, yeah, we, we, people can contact me on Facebook if they really want to. Good. Uh, you are the co-founder with mm -hmm. Uber. So that's a big deal. Mhm. Mm we want more women co-founders <laughs> of vlogs. Uh. <laughs> On stage, for example, like uh, something we didn't talk about at the, this um, summit, there was not... There was not a lot of women. There were not a lot of women on stage. There was uh, in the Q and A yesterday uh -huh. uh, uh, a lady from Erin from Microsoft. Actually, she's a great engineer, and she and she answered the toughest question. Uh, but uh, the first part, there was no women present. Yeah, that. it's true. I, I think it's a little unfortunate. But anyway. Thanks for being on. Mm -hmm. um, we need to wrap it up. I see that uh, they're coming back into the room. And so um, thanks for uh, being on. Uh, thanks to Don McGuire of Qualcomm for being on. And uh, stay tuned for next week. I've got a very special guest again. And uh, don't forget, ubergizmo.com. Go read your news, your reviews, your opinion pieces there. Also, you guys do videos on your YouTube channel, right? Yeah, a little bit of videos All right on the on. YouTube channel. All right. So stay tuned for next week and subscribe. And thanks to World Podcast for hosting this. You know where you can find me online. I'm Tanker on Twitter at TNKGRL. And the URL for the podcast is mobiletechpodcast.com. Tell your friends, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you next week. Cheers. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl, proudly presented by worldpodcasts.com. You can visit us online at mobiletechpodcast.com.